In 1918, the naval proving ground at Indian Head, Maryland, moved south on the Potomac River to a place later to be named Dahlgren. That same year of 1918 saw the creation of a small group in the Washington Navy Yard called the Mine Unit, eventually to establish itself in the Maryland countryside at a place known as White Oak. These two seemingly unrelated events made a difference. For out of them grew the Navy's largest research and development organization, the Naval Surface Weapons Center. From 1918 to 1983, 65 years of researching, developing, testing, and engineering. At age 65, most of us are ready to think about retirement, but not NSWC. At NSWC, we're going to continue making a difference. Today, NSWC makes a difference in the way the Navy conducts its affairs. We make a difference in the security of our country. We make a difference in how other countries of the world behave toward us. How did this difference come to be? What is it we've done to have such an impact? Our 65 years of growth and accomplishment form an intriguing story. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear to see who we are, where we come from, and why we make a difference. In 1918, it was obvious that the Naval Proving Ground at Indian Head, Maryland was outgrowing itself. A search for a new location revealed a parcel of land on the Potomac River in Virginia ideally suited for use as a proving ground. It came to be known as Dahlgren, the Navy's proving ground for guns and ammunition. The name was appropriate. It came from Admiral John Adolphus Dahlgren, one of the earliest research and development officers of our Navy. In 1847, he perfected a new type of naval weapon, the Dahlgren gun. The name Dahlgren has meant guns ever since. And guns were the new proving ground stock in trade. From this first firing in 1918, the main battery grew to include one of every kind of gun used in the Navy. As the guns fired, the station grew. From the first temporary buildings, to housing for employees, to officers' quarters, a new school, and more guns. Meanwhile, back in Washington, there was concern in another part of the Navy. World War I had re-emphasized how effective mine warfare could be as a naval strategy. To explore the potential of mines, a small group in the Washington Navy Yard undertook research. The group was called the Naval Ordnance Laboratory, NOL. NOL had a secondary mission to conduct research in ammunition and fusing, work started by Admiral Dahlgren in this same spot many years before. An immediate improvement which changed the nature of warfare at sea was the antenna influence firing mechanism for mines. Another idea was this novel concept of dropping a mine from an airplane, an idea we're still refining.
The early 40s found a great increase of activity at both White Oak and Dahlgren, as our country fought the greatest conflict ever seen on the face of the globe. At Dahlgren, proofing work on the revolutionary proximity fuse required firing as many as 400 rounds a day. Everybody knows that the atomic bomb was the final blow of World War II that convinced Japan to surrender. Many people don't know that this building, now the mail room at Dahlgren, was the center of much super secret activity which helped the bomb become a reality. But according to the Japanese themselves, the most important factor leading up to their surrender was the nearly total blockade of shipping which cut off their supply of food and raw materials. Many people think of the submarine firing torpedoes as an effective way to stop shipping. It is. Submarines knocked out nearly five million tons of Japanese shipping. What's not well known is that mines were more than twice as effective. Many still believe that the mining campaign was the single most effective facet of our war in the Pacific. The staff of both activities increased dramatically during and after the war. At Dahlgren, there was room to expand. An OL confined to the Navy Yard was bursting at the seams. Nearly a thousand acres of land in the Maryland countryside was chosen to become the Naval Ordnance Laboratory. This site, specially chosen because of its favorable magnetic properties, was carefully converted from peaceful farmland to a purposeful research facility. In 1946, Secretary of the Navy James Forrestal laid the cornerstone of the great new laboratory at White Oak. This was a heady moment for those who had championed the cause of science and technology in the service of the Navy. Our pride was worn unashamedly on our sleeves. The ideas of Admiral Dahlgren, nourished by American inventive genius and the advances of modern science, are now embodied in the U.S. Naval Ordnance Laboratory at White Oak, Maryland. This immense plant of more than 70 buildings and equipment is an ultra-modern scientific center where up-to-the-minute ordnance research and development is carried on. Within these structures are some of the world's finest facilities for the conversion of ideas into realities. Here is the famous supersonic wind tunnel building. The large tunnels, as well as the smaller ones, project through the building walls from the vacuum sphere and culminate in missile boxes in which the actual wind tests are made. With a precision-built model set up in the working section of one of the largest tunnels, cameras record the reactions of a projectile. The behavior of rockets, projectiles, and new types of guided missiles can be studied by measurement of forces and a detailed examination of their shock wave pattern. During this time, a revolution of another sort was cooking at Dahlgren. The job of preparing ballistic tables was tedious and time-consuming. It appeared that much of the routine work could be taken over by calculating machines. One of the earliest large-scale machines was the Aiken Relay Calculator installed at Dahlgren. It was the wonder of its day. It was in the days of the relay calculator that an amusing bit of history was made. A Dahlgren employee repaired a calculating machine one night by removing an insect from one of the relays. He described this process as debugging. The name has stuck. These early computers were so impressive that there was great incentive to improve them. The proving ground negotiated a contract with the IBM company who, for one dollar plus cost, built the Naval Ordnance Research Calculator, the most advanced computer in the world. This proved very unsettling to the scientists at White Oak. 
As long as the Navy was going to have a computer, they thought they should have it, not Dahlgren. Now they were sure the golden opportunity had been lost. The Navy had already bought its computer. In other areas, though, the two laboratories cooperated productively. One was an anti-submarine rocket known as Weapon A, successor to the well-known depth charge. Weapon A was test-fired on the ranges at Dahlgren, while White Oak designed the unique magnetic influence firing system. During the same time period, White Oak developed the angled arrow projectile, demonstrating that it was possible to build a guided projectile. Later, of course, Dahlgren ran with the idea and created the single most important improvement in gunnery since the Dahlgren gun. The volume of research and development work going on at Dahlgren suggested that the time was right for a change of identity. The name Proving Ground was quite inadequate to describe the caliber of scientific work going on. One suggestion was to change the name to the Naval Ordnance Laboratory Dahlgren. That suggestion was short-lived, though, as many people were afraid they'd be mistaken for a field station of White Oak. The name Naval Weapons Laboratory was much more acceptable. By this time, work in strategic weapons was an important part of the diet at both laboratories. Back in 1948, Captain Loeb of White Oak wrote about the recently demonstrated atomic bomb, saying, a sneak attack with atomic bombs would be unpleasant. Despite this, there was no cause for concern because the delivery of such bombs by rockets or missiles over long ranges was so far in the future it wasn't worth worrying about. Such a capability would not be possible for decades to come. Those impossible decades to come lasted about 15 years. With its expertise in fusing, White Oak was called upon to do the fusing work for Polaris and many other nuclear weapons. Dahlgren, with its talent for computers, was a vital part of the Polaris program and every strategic system since. The 50s and 60s were the glory days of missiles. White Oak, with its long expertise in underwater systems, had a star in Subrock, the submarine-to-submarine -submarine nuclear depth bomb. By this time, both Dahlgren and White Oak had moved into a state of maturity. Ready for the Navy, they had served so well to help them realign their emphasis one more time. White Oak and Dahlgren, so often on parallel paths, so often partners in complementary research and development programs, were combined to form the Naval Surface Weapons Center. The people at Dahlgren said, why do we need White Oak? The people at White Oak said, why do we need Dahlgren? Despite the occasional cynic, we've grown over the years to command the respect and admiration that the largest R&D center in the Navy deserves. But they love us not just for our past, they love us for our future too. In fact, in the hard, cold light of the real world, they love us only for our future. None of us is employed for what we've done. We're all here for what we're going to do. The future of the Naval Surface Weapons Center is where we can continue to make a difference. We are just beginning to see the possibilities of using robots to take over routine tasks or to work in areas too dangerous for people. A continuing program of shock testing will make our ships, submarines, and weapons better able to perform in the harsh environment they must face in battle. The secret world of electronic warfare will continue to grow in importance as we seek to win the battle without firing a shot.
and the whole world of underwater warfare. ASW, signal processing, acoustics, hydroballistics will continue to be one of our areas of strongest expertise. And in the tradition of Admiral Dahlgren, we'll continue to improve and refine guns. 65 years of service to the Navy is just a start. As others retire or rest on their laurels, we look forward to the opportunity to discover. We look forward to the opportunity to innovate. We look forward to the opportunity to provide our Navy with the excellence it needs to hold its leadership among the nations of the world. We are the Naval Surface Weapon Center. We have spent an entire career making a difference in world affairs. We're not about to stop now.